watch. We're live right now, both on MSNBC and at the Global Citizen Now event in New York City. And we're doing this interview in conjunction with the Global Citizen, focusing on climate change and poverty. Now, we agreed in advance that today's topic of conversation would be limited to those two issues that are, of course, the focus of the Global Citizen Now Summit. So let's welcome the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, who's hosting a summit of the world leaders in Paris this June to address these issues, among others. And he joins us live from the Elysee Palace in Paris. Mr. President, thank you so much for being here. Hello, Joe. Hello, everyone. Happy to be with you. It's wonderful to see you again. Um, let's start by talking about what you hope to accomplish in June. Obviously, the last two summits have been seen by some as disappointments. You've obviously taken that to heart, and you want this June to be successful. How does that get accomplished? Look, let's wait for the 22nd and the 23rd of June, uh, but we will make a big push. First, because we have to build a new consensus. Now fight against poverty, decarbonization of our economy, precisely to get uh, uh, carbon neutrality by 2050, and fight for biodiversity are very much linked together. And the new consensus is that the metrics are no more valid, basically, for, for these three battles. So we have to decide all together how to face these different challenges for poor countries, emerging countries in this developing world, and how much to invest and how to reform the whole infrastructure, World Bank, IMF, public and private money, and how to re-engage a new process. So this is the approach. Second, we, pre we are preparing this summit with different countries. Prime Minister Modi, uh, South Africa, Brazil, Zambia, Indonesia, a lot of countries from different continents some being member of G20, and India will lead the G20, but with emerging and very poor countries as well, because they have to be part of this reshaping and this reinvention of, uh, uh, of our new solidarity. And I know that you spoke about Bridgetown as well, and obviously Barbada will be part of these co-chairs. And third, uh, we will deliver concrete results. And we want very concrete actions. So this is a summit for a series of coalitions and actions. Uh, Mr. President, yesterday, uh, Hugh Evans, the CEO, obviously, of Global Citizen, uh, he announced his new Global Citizen campaign, Power Our Planet. And what Hugh and Global Citizen wants to focus on is figuring out how to fill the $16 billion climate funding gap that was already promised to the Global South in 2015. So the question is, uh, well, a couple questions here. First of all, what has been the holdup, and what do you plan to do to, uh, to help the global north move towards filling this gap, uh, gap for the global south? Look, uh, this is very, very true that we have to increase the efforts towards the global south. Now the question is, when we put these figures, which, I mean, what are we discussing about? And this is always the complexity. Some of the very poor countries need more subsidies, no loans, no private money, because there is no private money going to some of these countries. So we have to commit for more subsidies, very clearly with specific, specific amounts, but it's a country by country approach. I will revert on that. Second, for some of the countries, we, you will, they will request loans. And sometimes when we put billions and billions, we put together loans and subsidies. This is very different. So some other, much more emerging, they need loans. Third, some others, when they have to face with the consequences of climate change, they have, they, I mean, they, they, they require some change in the calculations, some change in the debt sustainability approach in the contract with World Bank and IMF. So this is a change in terms of regulation. Fourth, some of them need public money as a sort of first post guarantee and private money. So we have to be very precise, and this is one of the perspectives of this summit, not to add uh, in a certain way this type of amount, which should not be compared. Second, what we need is a new approach with the poor and emerging countries, a sort of country by country contract. 
This is exactly what we managed to do during the past two years in order to decarbonize some economy. This famous uh, GetP, Partnership for uh, Just Energy Transition. And we signed, for instance, with South Africa such a contract. And this is very, con very uh, uh, precise and concrete. South Africa committed to deliver a plan in order to decarbonize its economy. And World Bank, IMF, but as well France, Germany, US, UK, and some others, plus private money committed for very specific financing because you have very specific action. This is exactly what we have to do for this big bunch of 100 billion commitment through a country by country approach. What Chad, Zambia, or uh, 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 some other Southeast or Latin American countries need is very different from what Indonesia or Brazil will need. So we need this country by country approach and we have to be very precise on how to re-engage public money on the bilateral, multilateral side and private money. Now, on, um, on just a couple of general issues following up on the new approach to the poorer countries. First of all, there's obviously the $100 billion in the IMF fund uh, that, that was given. There's $37 billion still outstanding there. Uh, and so global, citizen, uh, global citizens are curious about um, what can be done to unlock that $37 billion to help the poorest countries who obviously are in, in the most dire need. And also, can you, can you address a real concern that we're hearing here at this summit, and I know you've heard an awful lot there as well, that some of the poorest countries have to pay some of the highest interest rates uh, to, to, to move toward uh, cleaning up their environment. How can yep. that be reformed? Look, as for the reallocation of the uh, special uh, duty rights issued by the IMF, all those who committed to reallocate now has to finalize a plan. This is not yet done. Through ratification, vote of the parliament, and so on. We committed to go from 20% of reallocation to 30%. This is what France will do, and we will push during this summit and for the G20 in India to do so. So now it's just a question of implementation. So this is as well for the richest country, how just to respect the commitment. And I, I just want to, here to, um, to remind us that in the G20 in Roma, we committed to do so. Um, if, we, if some countries have um, difficulties for legal, technical reasons to reallocate these SDRs, they can decide to take budget money. Second, for uh, the, the poorest country and, and the problem you mentioned, this is very true. But let's be clear, this is because these countries, they do need subsidies and not, no more loans. And we have to agree on the principle, and this is one of the objectives of, of this summit in Paris in June, and what I just mentioned when I, I described the structure of this famous 100 billion, is that for some countries, this is not private money. Private money will never go in a very poor country because they have no return, because of the difficulties and the country risk. And it should not be loans sometimes, because this country have such a debt situation or so much difficulties that they cannot afford having loans. They just need subsidies. And we have, we have to agree and reset our own approach that in our metrics, we have to reinvest in subsidies for certain categories of countries. And this is very true that in order to face inequalities, in order to face food security, healthcare systems difficulties, and climate change, sometimes our very poor countries need more subsidies and no more loans. And if we accept to have this category and to commit all together, this is one of the key delivery for me of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the summit. Uh, Mr. President, over the past few days, Global Citizen's been taking questions from across the world on social media. Uh, and we've got a great one here uh, from Susan Francis from the UK. And she asks this question. Uh, what are you doing to ensure that countries and companies that have caused loss and damage actually pay into the new loss and damage fund? This is very true. And in, in, the, in the formal discussion, you had this, uh, this approach with uh, oil and gas companies and 
and different sectors being, being part of the origins of this uh, loss and damage. So first, I think, and it's part of the Bridgestone agenda and what we want to put on the table here, this is having a bigger commitment of the richest countries and having a bigger commitment in terms of financing, but I would say fair and right financing. And what we want to do is to invest in these countries being victim of the first loss and damages, to have more investment in subsidies, in first loss guarantees, in loans when it's adapted, to precisely face these consequences. So re-engagement of the richest countries in order to reassess and reprecise the framework. Second, we want for the private company, both I mean companies and investors, a commitment as well during this summit. Be sure that they will invest in this very country a fair amount of money, and especially when they are involved in sectors being largely involved in the cause of these losses and damages. So what we need is not just vague commitments, because in Sharm El Sheikh we had the beginning of the process, and, uh, and we committed, we agreed the principle of a fund. Now, for me, in the Paris summit, what we want to do is a mechanism and sector by sector for the private sector and for the richest countries through very clear commitments, an approach in order to be sure that we invest the right amount of money and we bridge the gap with uh, uh, the, the financing request of these countries. Uh, Mr. President, you recently uh, visited China. Uh, that made a few headlines in the United States <laughs> and across so. the world, as, as you're aware. Um, as you know, China is uh, it's the biggest annual emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. They're also considered, uh, by some metrics, to also be a developing country, so they, aren't, uh, they don't have to adhere to some of the strict uh, standards. I'm curious, did you get any assurances from President Xi that uh, they would take concrete steps to move towards uh, participating more globally to reduce greenhouse emissions? Yeah, I think we need three things mainly uh, regarding China. Number one, uh, it's to accelerate the peak for uh, uh, CO2 emission. As you know, they still have a lot of coal plants and coal activities. So they accelerated regarding the first, in comparison with the first announcement they made, what we want them to do is to reach the peak before and to start decreasing their own uh, CO2 emission. I mean, I didn't get at this uh, meeting, but I urge President Xi to engage in that direction. Number two, it's to stop financing and developing with the, the key emerging countries and the key partners of the uh, uh, the, 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 the Belt and Road Initiative uh, uh, clearly uh, to develop and finance coal activities. It's, they made a lot of effort, they improved on, that, uh, on this issue, but we have to be closely um, coordinated with them and work very closely with them in order to completely stop the financing of uh, new coal plants in, uh, uh, in their key partners and, on, in, in third countries through China. Third, they have to be engaged in this famous partnership uh, we want to do, and uh, in what they do with poor and emerging countries, especially in Africa. As you know, China finances a lot, uh, African uh, economies especially. We managed two years ago to involve them in our global framework, i.e. to be more respectful with the OECD uh, uh, rules, and one of the objective of this uh, the summit is as well to have China being engaged with us, given their own exposure in terms of financing of these countries. Now, what we, have, what we want to do with China is to completely engage them to be much more consistent in terms of debt sustainability uh, for these countries, but to avoid through their financing to finance, I mean, non-compliant activities with our own strategies. And we want them to be much more involved on developing renewables and uh, sustainable energies and activities in Africa instead of helping them to develop new uh, coal plants or uh, uh, coal uh, activities. And on this issue, I'm reasonably confident that we can have with us China signing new roadmap and new commitments. Uh, and finally, Mr. President, uh, China is uh, the, the number one emitter 
Of course, the yeah. United States, who's going to also be involved in the planning for this summit, is the second uh, largest emitter of greenhouse gases and uh, actually uh, historically at the top of any list. Is the United States doing enough right now to cut emissions to help fund uh, the desperate needs of the global south and to move toward a cleaner economy? Look, I think um, the U.S. is engaged today in a very ambitious and efficient way to deliver a concrete result through the different regulation passed by uh, as the current administration. And President Biden is very much involved in this uh, uh, green technology and green industry strategy. So I, I, I think the U.S. as an economy has a very clear roadmap and I think a very efficient roadmap. One of my concerns is to be sure that we uh, uh, we managed to have a synchronization between uh, Europe and US, and we preserve the integration of the value chain, and this is what I advocated in December when I visited the US. But on, uh, as far as the US is concerned, I think this strategy is a very smart and efficient one. Second, now, what we want to do with the US, and US is a key player, is to be sure that all together, we invest much more towards poor, developing, and emerging countries in order to help them to accelerate this transition. And this is where having the U.S. on board on the reform of the World Bank, acceleration of the reform of the IMF, um, finalization of new instruments and new, invent new incentives, and these innovations will be part of what we want to deliver for our summit in June, is absolutely key. And having the U.S. being uh, much more on board to, uh, to finance them and to innovate with us is, uh, is, is, is critical. And, and finally, I think the more we can have the U.S. working with China in such a roadmap will be very useful. And for this is, as far as I'm concerned, for the June summit, one of my key objectives is on this roadmap and one of these key uh, 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 outcomes to have both the U.S. and China on board. And, and if we want to... Um, to win this, uh, this battle for biodiversity, climate change, and, 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 and fighting against poverty, we need both the U.S. and China on board, for sure. All right. President Emmanuel Macron, thank you so much for being with us. We're grateful uh, that you spent time with us to talk about climate change, and we are certainly all looking forward uh, to the summit this June. And I'll be sitting down uh, with you, I believe, for a more lengthy discussion. But uh, it's so great to have you here. Hugh Evans and the entire global citizen community appreciates it. Thank you very much to you, Joe. And thank you to, to everyone in New York. And thank you to the, the whole community and the global citizen. I think this type of mobilization, this discussion, but as well having inspiring people uh, um, with you, is extremely important to mobilize everyone. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mr. President. And now, Mika, you can go back to talking about Tucker Carlson.